Welcome to our studies in the Gospel of John. Glad to have you with us today. I'm Dick Baker, your teacher. And today we begin John chapter 12. There are two uh, very interesting. Uh, one is immensely big, the triumphal entry of Jesus. The other is the anointing of his feet. This has been the theme verses and uh, will continue to be so throughout the entire book. It's a summary of the book itself and many other th signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. So what are we looking at and where have we been? Well, this is the outline of the entire book, and we are wrapping up the first half of the outline, chapters 1 to 12. It's a pretty good break of the entire book. Uh, it's been about ministry to multitudes, groups of people, although he spends time with individuals. But he makes himself available to the general public and religious leaders. Next, these last chapters are the ministry that to the disciples to get him ready, to get them ready to be without him and to carry the gospel and the work and make it continue. So in 11, we've seen the resurrection of Lazarus and the reac reaction was people believed. Uh, with the anointing uh, by Mary, uh, there's a reaction and it's jealousy. And then we'll look at uh, Christ, the coronation, the triumphal entry and the reaction of the people's jubila jubila jubilation. Sorry, um, This portrays, I am the lifted up one, is who Jesus Christ is. So what's in this chapter? The anointing, 1 to 11. That's what we'll look at today. And the triumphal entry, we'll follow that in our next session. So let me give you some scripture, then we have a few uh, diagrams to look at, so we get a handle of things. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. Now six days, it six, means six days before the Passover, so this makes this about a Saturday. Uh, and the, so the Passover would start the next Friday, the one coming up. Of course, that's some, there's some real, well, this is the betrayal, this is the crucifixion, is all falling in into a very small amount of time. Here you can see Bethany, and you can see it's not far from Jerusalem. And Jesus, in doing the triumphal entry, will leave Bethany, go to Bethpage, and he will make his way down the Mount of Olives and in through the Eastern Gate as he presents himself as the Messiah. Crowds will line the way. The closer he gets to the city, the more the people, the more the shouting, the more rejoicing. If you want an air view of everything, the satellite, you can see Bethany, the positioning over to Bethpage, down the, mount, down the road, down the Mount of Olives and then into the Temple Mount. Verse 2, there they made him a supper, and that would be Martha and Mary, and, uh, but, uh, and Lazarus also was one that sat there. And they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him, with the Lord Jesus. The supper here is the main meal of the day, so it was the big, big meal, and it was evening time. I'm reading another scripture that will give you a better insight here. And in Bethany, and being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, which uh, was very costly and anointed the feet of Jesus. He wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. So the pound of was a flask. It was a container. It would have been broken. And spikenard was in, 
imported from India in alabaster jars. Very, very expensive. Only opened, and in this many cases only broken, for special occasions. And it comes from the nard plant, which I've never seen. Uh, the washing of the feet of the Lord was a sign of servitude. So here you have Martha, and here you have Mary. Mary, Martha is serving and doing her job, and uh, made the supper, um, and fed, but Mary was uh, taking actually the position of a servant. And both of these ladies did, are doing wonderful things. They're serving the Lord. It's uh, how they feel called, how the Lord is impressed upon their heart to serve the Lord. We don't all serve the Lord together or alike. Many of us have different gifts. And so because of those gifts, it takes us to different ministries and within ministries, different tasks. So here, these ladies are, are really incredible people. They they were early believers of the Lord and had no problem saying that they believed he was the Messiah in a crowd or to him face to face. So here's Mary's service uh, to the Lord. Mary sat at Jesus' feet. We read that and learned in Luke 10. Mary fell at Jesus' feet and surrendered. We saw that in the last chapter 11. And here Mary anoints Jesus' feet and, his, and his honors our Lord. In chapter 12, then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. No comment. Why, this is him speaking, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Well, the 300 pence is 300 denarii. That's about 50 bucks in our wages, and that was the wages for a year if you were lucky. And so Judas tries to shame Mary. This is the only time he does anything evil or wicked until the betrayal. She really wants her to feel bad. You should have sold this. Why'd you break this? Why'd you run it just for that? And so it, he's yelling, a jar was broken worth $50. And so he thinks it could have been given to the poor. Well, that may very have been true, but that was not the purpose. Verse 6. This he said, not that he cared for the poor. So that, that, was, that was a lie. But because he was a thief and had the bag and bear what was put therein. Right? The word bag means box. He had a box that he carried. Um, oftentimes, musical instrument mouthpieces would be put in it. And he would carry that around with him. And he bare or he carried off what was put therein. So he put it in the box, and then he carried it off. So I wonder where he went. I wonder where he tried to, to take it. Normally, and I put this on here, Joe Ash used one of these in Second Chronicles 24, 8, if you want to f check that reference out. All right, now here's the Lord. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my burying has she kept this. What Jesus was saying in the Greek, he was saying, Jesus said, let her alone. Uh, she, this was done to prepare me for my coming burial. That's why she did this. For the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. And that's true. That we always have the poor with us. Much people, the Jews, therefore, uh, knew that he was there, and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. The word many here, or much, is talking about people, much common people of the Jews. The everyday people came, came to see Jesus. They knew he was there, but they came mostly to see Lazarus also. And when they knew or they found out, they, they were all headed that way. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Wow, what a threat. We already we talked about being a threat in the last chapter. And that's what Jesus became. One of the reasons they wanted him dead, he was a threat to them. Now all of a sudden, the chief priests want to put Lazarus to, dead, to death also 
because he's a threat. Most of the chief priests were Sadducees, and they did not believe in resurrection. What had just happened? Christ raised Lazarus from the dead. It was a resurrection, and it was in his, it was in their face. They said, "We don't believe in this," and it became a huge problem for them. But what happened is Lazarus became the huge problem. They just deflected and made up and said, "Well, if we kill him, we get rid of it. We get rid of that." He's dead. Why doesn't he come back to life again? Because that by reason of him, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus. And that is true also. Uh, because they were losing their people and losing control on their people. Well, that wraps that up. And that's a short, uh, a short ending, I should say, and a short passage of Scripture. But it's a very powerful passage also. And so the wrap up on that, if I can just drop back one, and you know, people get offended today. Um, there are there are preachers, ministers of churches, that uh, they don't like it when people get saved. They don't like it when people say, "Hey, I'm going to church that it's alive," because they lose their power base, they lose money, uh, they lose influence. That doesn't, that doesn't stand good. And uh, we need to understand as God's people, we need to stand strong. We need to go to good churches that has a pastor and a staff that believe in the word of God, literally, all of it, and preach it and teach it and, uh, and walk it and challenge God's people to walk and not to vary from it. So we saw some very strong people here today, Judas, Roared his head. We saw Martha serving. We saw Mary serving the Lord, and we know Lazarus is there. But we saw power people in the in the Sadducees, and so there's a lot going on, and a lot of movement. It's like a chess game. Well, he did this. Well, we need to move over this way and maybe kill Lazarus. So you can see the plot thickening. You can see the lies that are being told, the sellouts, the promises that are going to be made. That's all, that's all here, but it's going to continue as we finish off the book. And um, I'll point things out to you, but you'll see them as we read them. Thank you for being with us today. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for the Lord Jesus and who he is and all these variances that we're reading and all these things that people are doing and reactions and actions, we see truth standing firm and standing strong and not changing. And so we thank you for the testimony that Jesus brought with him that he could give to others. Thank you for the testimony of Mary and Martha. Thank you for that of, of Lazarus. These are our heroes in this story. These are the ones that, are, that are, will stand strong and they will continue on, and they will be great servants of the Lord. The religious leaders and Judas, they're the losers. And Lord, we know that there are people that just reject the Lord, and it's their loss. How sad. So Lord, may our testimony be true for you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, and God bless you.